Well, hello there and welcome to another video, uh, well, actually podcast about uh, War Thunder and what's going on there. Okay, well, uh, during this week uh, there was a release of news where the, uh, let's say, official rules or official institution of the, what's going to be called a player council, um, have been published. And that has caused a lot of problems. Um, I'm going to say that personally I think there are some things wrong with that and that they should have been done in a different way but I'll enter into it later. I'll also say that um, well probably you guys will know and I also will speak about that. I'm going to be a technical and historical advisor to the council. Um, I was approached by Gajin to take that role because I can't run for a council uh, seat. Um, I'll enter into detail about that later on. Anyway, the big issue with the rules and the um, and big problem with them is that, let's face it, we are at the stage where everyone is highly suspicious about Gajin because people's patience is running out. It's been a long while, the game is in a not that great shape, uh, the battle rating C uh, the system simply doesn't work and is producing worse and worse results as the days go by. Uh, there was a, a, another update of the game uh, these days and again we can see that the, the trend increases. I mean, things that were already being unfairly tiered and unfairly priced and whatever are still following that trend and it's never going to stop. And uh, we are going to re get even worse results uh, with the tiering system as time goes by. However, we are no longer speaking about the battle rating system. We are <laughs> already spoke about that last week. If you didn't see last podcast, well, uh, just um, take a look in my channel. It's there where I explain why the uh, tiering system is failing the way it's um, failing right now. Now let's discuss the rules of the player council. Okay, the player council, as it's instituted, will be a five-strong uh, group of people who will act as a um, link of communication between the player base and Gaijin. The idea is for them to collect the useful ideas from the community and bring them forward and bring them forward in maybe even improving them themselves, uh, so Gaijin can consider them to add them. Also, uh, the idea is that whatever idea has to be turned down can be, uh, well, go taken back to the community and presented like, okay, we presented this, they are not accepting this idea because this, this, this and that. So it's kind of a way to improve communications between the player base and Gaijin. And I think it's a really good idea because at this stage, um, the situation is very tense. I mean, we have a group of extremely annoyed players, and I understand why they are annoyed. And um, we have a group of very tired um, community managers because they have to deal not only with valid complaints, but because with a daily storm of bullshit and personal accusations that in some cases or in most cases is totally unwarranted. Uh, I'm the last guy in this world who will say that uh, the community um, mods in, in Gaijin have done the best work ever. And I'm not going to say that they are the best mods ever, not by a far margin. There are some names in that group that I think they are simply not worth being there at all. But say that, I also have to agree that it's very complicated to pay uh, attention to the, what the community is actually trying to tell you when you have to spend hours of your working time in just clearing the forum out of disruptive stuff, because there is. There are a lot of people who just are there spooing crap for the sake of spooing crap. A lot of trolls, a lot of idiots, and a lot of people that just have personal reasons to crap on the moderators. And that should happen. And that's a problem, because if you do that on a daily basis, the mods get jaded, they get tired, and finally what happens is that anything they read, they tend to take personal. 
and that's not a good situation. So some kind of middle link between the player and the um, developers, I think, is a really good idea. Now, let's discuss the idea itself. First, I'm going to focus on the idea of five members. I would say that maybe more would have been a welcome thing, especially maybe six. Mm, but six has a problem, and that's that the the ideas that are put forward towards Gaijin are done so through a potation system within the council. So if you have a six strong council, uh, then you will have a lot of ties, or potentially you will. Uh, so maybe seven would be a good idea, at least for me. This is my personal idea and how I would approach this. Why seven? Well, first of all, it's an even number. I mean, an odd number. So you won't have ties in your in your votations. And um, it would be kind of a chairman, let's say, and two um, council members per game mode. So you ho will have representation, representation who's specialized in arcade, representation who's are, um, specialized in in realistic historical battles, and, and a representation of simulator battles. Why uh, two per game mode? Where well, there's a chance that one of the guys who's selected tries to push for personal agendas and not for what the community wants. So by having two on that group, you ensure that one is looking at what the other is doing and ensure that, hey guy, that thing you are trying to put forward is not something that the community has is supporting. It's something that you personally support. So I think five, <coughs> I think it's too small of a number and it kind of lacks the specialization that you would, at least I would wish for. But still, okay, it's, it's not terrible for a starting point could work perfectly. Now we are going to go to the rules of eligibility to be a, can a candidate. Now, if you want to be a candidate, you have to accomplish, uh, accomplish with these rules. I'm going to name them one by one, and then I'm going to uh, explain them in detail, giving my thoughts. One, the minimum age requirement will be 21 years of age. Two, um, candidates uh, should be willing to sign an NDA which will be necessary if the Council is informed about some of the things in developed prior to public release. 3. Have a proven record of being helpful to the community and being knowledgeable about the game. 4. Have a game account which has seen, uh, been active for at least 90 days and is actively used to play the game. 9. A candidate must have the same nickname for a duration of 30 days before the election and, if elected, is not allowed to change, change his nickname during his term. 6. Being constructed in all previous community involvement whilst not having a history of punishment or bad, be bad behavior. 7. Anyway, anyone who has previously signed an NDA with Gajin, including employees and volunteers, current and past, interns, family members of Gajin employees, as well as other gaming company employees, affiliates and partners, are ineligible for a place in the um, Player Council. 8. Council members cannot be chosen for two consecutive terms. And 9. Candidates must prove, pro provide proof of, of identity to Gajin, including their real names, in the form of a valid passport or ID card. So those are the rules. Now, those who know me and those who have been following the whole process of the community votations and community polls that have took place two weeks ago after the emissary thing was announced, uh, know that almost every other candidate that earned a lot of support in those votes is left out by these rules. Of course, that's not helping and I'm going to comment on that later. But first, let's take a look at those rules one by one. The first, minimum age, 21 years of age, well, is the minimum legal age in many nations. Also, you want to have someone who's mature enough to assume that role. Let's say this clearly. Someone who accesses that council is going to have a heck of a job in, work of, in front of him. He's going to be super exposed to um, attacks from the community if something goes wrong. Uh, requires a lot of work, has absolutely no reward, has absolutely no pay, has absolutely nothing 
in return for your work other than watching the game you love uh, improve. So you want someone who's matured and who, yeah, I mean, who, who, who who's really matured to access those posts. So 21 years of age, I don't think is too exigent. Second, and this one has caused a lot of trouble, the NDA. <clears throat> now, that they are asking for the council members to sign an NDA is totally understandable. I'm going to, um, I'm going to say it clearly, I don't have a problem with this point. Why? Because probably the council members will have access to what Gallin is working at currently for the next patch or the next two patches. And that's an information that you don't want to share in the open. Why will they have access to that kind of stuff? Well, probably because if they are going to address the player base and tell them, hold on a second, that thing that you are um, that idea that you are proposing, we can't put it up right now because they are working on something along that lines. Well, they can say that. They won't say exactly what Gaijin is working it in, but they will, if they know what's coming, they will be able to answer uh, some ideas that have to be turned down in that fashion. Okay. Now, of course, a lot of people are interpreting this NDA thing as you can't say anything you we don't want you to say and uh, no that's not the case and i can i will enter into detail on this later when i speak about my own spot as a council assistant um, but the nda is there for the reasons i told you it's not to shut people out i will have to see such an nda the same as the council members. I won't be a council member, but, but such an NDA I will have to sign. In fact, I signed a NDA as an alpha tester one year ago, and that NDA, which is still legit and valid and still holds true, uh, might work for this. Which means that NDA didn't say anything about don't say your own opinions, don't be open about what you say, or you will face the consequences. I have that, that NDA signed for one year and a half, and you can for sure tell that I have never held back in my criticism to Gaijin. So the NDA, the representatives will have to sign, will have absolutely nothing to do with the fact that they can speak freely about their opinions on the game. And that they won't be yes men, that they will be able to say only what Gaijin tells them to say. Okay, so that's a very important thing. I don't have any problem with this point. Three. Have a proven record of being helpful to the community and being knowledgeable about the game. I think this is pretty much a must. I don't think any discussion is required. Four, have a game account which has been active for at least 90 days and is actively used to play the game. I don't have any trouble with the first part. I think it's perfectly sensible. Um, you want someone who has played the game enough to understand its mechanics and the problems it might have and to have, a um, well, an objective view on the state of the game. Now, with the second part, I don't agree. The second part pretty much suits me down. I can't be part of the part of this council because I'm not playing the game at the moment. Um, and I don't, don't think it's really that important. I mean, I left the game seven months ago because I was foretelling everyone um, the problems that would be rising because of the new tiering system. I'm pretty much updated on the problems of the game by the very s simple reason that I was predicting them seven months ago. I don't have to play the game to know the, the, the problems it has. I was already uh, saying that those problems will come seven months ago. And the same can be said by uh, for other players who have left the game already and they are not active players anymore. Um, but then again, I can see why is Decided to have someone who is actively playing the game, taking a seat on the council. I don't think, however, that is a demand or something that should be a rule. But, well, the rule is this. And I don't fully agree with it. Five. A candidate must have the same nickname for a duration of three times, 30 days, blah, blah, blah. I don't, have, I don't think anyone will complain about this one. However, six. Being constructive in our previous community involvement whilst not having a history of punishment or bad, bad behavior. Now, 
Um, back to the game. Moderate in action in the forums. We all know that Gaiin has good moderators, but also has some awful ones. And I'm going to say it openly. Awful. Like, really. I'm not going to qualify them, because if I would, <laughs> that would be really some serious stuff. There are some names in that group of uh, mods that should have never given the power to be a mod. But there are others who are really valid, and they are really good at what they do or try to do. Um, they are having problems, of course, uh, trying to keep the forum civil, but well. Anyway, the thing is that in the past a lot of people who really didn't deserve a ban have been banned. Me the first. I have been banned several times from that forum. Of course, I'm not going to say that each of that bans was undeserved, because some of them were deserved. <laughs> but some of them weren't, and I can perfectly see that someone who has had a past ban in the forum and can, can't access this uh, selection process because of that can be extremely pissed off. Why? Because he was unfairly banned and now he's been unfairly left out. Now, in this particular point, I want to clear out that after speaking with um, with uh, the community managers for about my own spot in this in this council uh, as technical advisor. Uh, this rule is open for interpretation. I mean, what they are trying to leave out is people who have been banned because of racial attacks or repeated and really repeated insults and uh, very grave um, insults to other players, mods or whatever. I mean, this is to deal with some extreme cases. Uh, for people who haven't had that bad of a past or if they have been um, banned because they simply called another guy a moron and well, yeah, he got banned for that. This is not going to be a left out clause. I mean, he's still going to be able to run for the candidacy. So looks harsh. That is not that bad. And the reason why it's put up is perfectly understandable to keep um, the worst scam out of the places of responsibility, which I think everyone wants. Now, the big problem I do have with seven. I mean, eight and night uh, and nine well, council members uh, cannot be chosen for two consecutive terms. I don't see why, honestly, because if someone is doing a good job, why would you want to take him out? I mean, if it's if it is, isn't broken, don't fix it. Um, I guess this is a way to not perpetuate people in some places and to give a fair chance for everyone to access the council. But again, if we want a working council, why not leave everyone to be there as long as they are doing a good job? Um, well, I mean, I don't really care, but um, this could have been different, but it's okay as it is. And nine, uh, some proof of identity to gain, including the real names in the form of a valid passport or ID card. Well, first of all, this is pretty much a must if you are going to see, sign an NDA. If you sign an NDA, you have to give them proof that who's who is signing the NDA is you and not someone else. Okay, so that's to be expected. This is a requirement that actually shouldn't be there because by signing an NDA, you are actually doing it. But back to seven. Anyone who has previously signed an NDA with Gaijin, including employees, volunteers, current and past. Well, first of all, I can see why this rule should be here because we all know those for instance youtubers who have had a close affiliation with Gaijin signing an NDA with them of course and are pretty well known at this stage as nothing but <laughs> the voice of Gaijin <laughs> so if one of those guys was to access the council, everyone will scoff at the local council and think it's worthless. So keeping that kind of people out is perfectly understandable. The same goes with close uh, affiliates of Gaijin, people who are known uh, for supporting Gaijin or giving them a strong... Um, I, I mean, you know what I mean, okay? You want those guys out because otherwise no one would take this council seriously. And if it's going to work, it has to be. Uh, taken seriously. However, the only problem is that this NDA also covers people as the alpha testers. And um, really, I don't like that. And I have heard firsthand 
in a um, team, team speak conversation with people from Gallin. I have heard their reasons to include this. I understand those reasons, um, but I don't agree with them. Essentially, they say that they know perfectly everyone who has signed an NDA with them. They know how good or bad a candidate could be, and that they don't want any of uh, the alpha testers in, in, in the group. Not because all of them aren't appropriate, but because some of them are appropriate. And if they are not uh, left out, there could be problems. So this is a problem of a vast ma majority of very valid possible candidates paying for the problems um, caused and, um, well, yeah, for the problems, a very few of them caused in the past uh, with Gallin. I don't know exactly the details. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to ask because probably they can't tell me. But it seems that some former alpha members, um, there must be some huge problem with them. Because this is not just to keep people who are, um, who have links with Gallin out for credibility reasons. This is also, also, also to keep out unwanted people. And uh, while, I, uh, while I understand that, that's essentially a problem. First of all, you are letting a lot of people who are valid for the post out of the election process. Why? Because you have had a problem with some of them in the past or some of the alpha team members in the past. Not all of them, only a few of them. But as you have to set a rule to keep those out, you are making others ineligible as well. And that's not fair. I don't agree with that. Second, I think if this is going to be a community-based votation and a community-based representative uh, organism and institution, um, you should give uh, everyone the chance to be there, regardless of your past problems with them. And um, yeah, that's a problem because I don't think this rule is fair. Not the way it's worded. I understand why it's worded the way it is, but I don't agree with it. Now, what these rules have caused is a lot of people to disagree with them. Because, of course, that means that the guys they have voted for couldn't be in that council, starting with me. A lot of people who wanted me in that council were super annoyed to see that I couldn't run for, for that spot. Myself. Well, myself, I was annoyed by the rules because I was thinking of people like, I don't know, Wild Blue Yonder or Crossing Walrus or, I don't know, if, oh, Lensko, obviously, but Lensko is perfectly out. <laughs> I mean, there are, I thought of the people I would have voted. I wasn't thinking of myself. And I found that I was without a vote. Only Bismarck, which complies with all of these points. Uh, but Bismarck also didn't like the rules and he initially said he was not running for it. I think he has changed his, his mind um, at this at this moment. But his initial reaction was, I'm staying out of this. So I could see why a lot of people were angry. The problem is, of course, that people were also interpreting this as um, another maneuver by Gallin to establish some kind of worthless institution to throw at the masses as a bone and to chew on it and to uh, make them feel better but not a real worthwhile or workable um, institution and honestly i thought exactly that when i read these forums and uh, these rules um not because i thought that they, that was their intention i know their intentions and it's not that but reading at this um at these rules I just thought that, who, I mean, all, all of the people who really deserve to be there can't be voted to be there. And that as a result, the council will end up being something worthless. That was what I thought. And that's what a lot of other people um, thought and think about these rules. Now, finally, there's a group who just started saying and claiming that Gaijin wanted just yet another group of I'm not going to name names, but yes, another instance of people of yes men who would just say whatever they were told. Okay. 
And of course, they wouldn't accept that, and they are super angry, and they are announcing that they are going to leave the game. Well, up to now, just these have been facts. Okay. Now I'm going to speak about myself, what I have been offered, what I have accepted, and the role I'm going to take, and why I'm going to take it. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was approached by Quarta Ninja and Oleg. Um, as you know, they are both community managers. And they, well, we had a conversation, a pretty long conversation in TS, where, amongst other things, they offered me a spot not as a council member, but as an adjutant, as an assistant to the council, to give them any technical feedback and historical feedback they need in order to take their decisions and to improve the ideas they receive and or to take uh, or to have a proper historical um, opinion on whatever they are thinking if they need it i mean if they don't it's okay but if they do need it i'm just there to help okay now the position is totally without any power whatsoever so if you are go thinking about posting a comment in the comment section below asking what's the first thing I'm going to try to change as a um, member of the council, I'm not a member of the council. I won't be able to push any idea in that scenario. Of course, in the forums, I will be exactly the same, asking for this to change, that to change, as any other player. All right? But as my official state status, I won't have any real power. Now, of course, now you will be wondering, then why have you accepted it? Well, um, this idea is an idea that if works, will mean a huge, huge change for this game. And it's going to be, mean that it's going to improve a lot. And it's going to mean that finally players will have a go and a say in the way this game is developed. A reasonable say, of course. This doesn't mean that any idiot or any moron or any troll ha is going to have a go at it. But sensible ideas will have a direct link to Gaijin. And good proposals are going to find their way up to the developers directly, almost, only going through the council. All right? So this is potentially an immense opportunity for the community and for the players and for the game. Now, the first thing you have to understand, guys, is that ha I have been out there for 20 months um, saying that Gaijin, amongst many other things, I have said that Gaijin should pay closer attention to what their community is telling them. If now I, I am offered this spot and I su instantly switch it down because it has no real power, what I am is an asshole. Because now I'm offered the chance to help those who will have this um, player voice in front of Gaijin. I have to help them. I have no other option but to accept. I simply have to. Because otherwise I will be the biggest hypocrite out there. And I'm not. So I have to accept it. Of course, I have to accept it if the idea of the council is serious. And if the proposal is real, and if Gaijin is taking this seriously, and not as another PR stunt to keep people happy. But after speaking with uh, the community managers for a good while, and in real voice, I mean, this was not a collection of PMs, this was a proper compensation, I made a lot of questions, and um, undirect questions as well. You know me, I'm blunt. I, I don't go around. I just ask her the most important things. And the answers were all right. All of them. They are really taking this seriously, guys. They really want this player concept to work the way they are saying they want it to work. They want it to be a player mm, voice uh, direct to, to the devs. And they want the good ideas of the players to have a better access to Gaijin as, and the developer and the, and the development team. Now, of course, another question you will make, well, they have all these ideas in the forums, why don't they just read them? Well, because it's harder, and I can understand that, it's harder to do that 
when in your do in job shift you have to read those things you have to send them to the developers and you have to discuss them and at the same time you have to keep all the trolls at check you have to keep all the personal attack away and you have to keep all that bullshit that simply keeps them distracted this is going to be a core of five guys who are going to six with me who are going to be dedicated to the task of taking those ideas consider them look and decide whether they are valuable or not and then send them to Gaijin and then come back to the player base with Gaijin's answer okay so this really will also help moderators to center their job in moderating the forums which at the current moment is really a daunting task on itself so it's not bad, a bad idea it's an institution that will help of course could we do without a council i think we could uh, but seriously better to have this also i think it's a much better thing because let's say that someone joe presents an idea to the council the idea seems really good it's really solid really viable and really it, it makes sense within the scope of the game so this idea goes through the console and the console presents it to Gaijin but for whatever reason Gaijin can't implement it maybe because it has um, problems with being implemented for resource reasons maybe they are focused on doing something and they don't have time for this at the moment then the community would come back to Joe and tell the, him in public, well, yo, they have been thought about this idea, they find it really cool, but the only problem is that right now is in a total different field than what they are working. It's going to take a while, so hold on. But the idea is taken, it's been considered, and they think it's good. Right now, if you place an idea in the suggestion forum, um, you may get some feedback. Oh, okay, good, I will send it. But you don't get a lot more than that. You don't know if you have been heard or not. You don't know if they have even taken the time to read your, your advice. With this, you not only know that you are listened, you will probably also get a much better answer. And people will get a better feeling of being in communication with the devs. So I think it's a really good idea. Finally, the most I think the most important thing that right now, every one of you is thinking. Well, Ram, one week, two weeks ago, we had one big member of Gaijin saying that uh, B17s versus I15s and that the TNA system was not open for discussion. What do we want a council for if they are not open to change things the community wants them to change? And that's a big deal. They are. Because this was my first question. When they approached me with this and I was asking them about the council, well, actually, the first thing we dealt with was the rules. But after that, when we started speaking about my role in the council, etc., I wanted to make sure that the council was worth anything. Because if the council is going to be worthless, I'm not going to waste my time in that spot. All right? So the first uh, question I, I made was that. Was, okay, the thing I want to know is, is Gaijin open to change whatever in the game if the community wants them to change it? The answer was yes. Now, of course, that yes is not, if they come to us saying we want to change this, we are going to instantly change it. No. I mean, in the suggestions may need to make sense. They need to be uh, implementable, because some of them can't, at least not without a huge deal of resources they don't currently have. Maybe in the future, yes, but right now, no etc. What they want is viable ideas that work with a complex game as worth on there is. Because of course everyone has very good ideas with theory, me the first. <laughs> I have a, and you know that I am a strong proponent of a theory model, okay? Everyone has ideas. They have literally hundreds if not thousands of different suggestions regarding theory. But what they want is a system that they understand that it's going to be good for the game and that takes in account how complicated the game is and the thousands of different models of planes, tanks and even ships that the game is going to have in release. It's not as easy as people think. I still think that what they have done is really bad and that it totally needs a change and I still think that my personal proposal is, fits perfectly with what they ask. And I see a lot of other people's ideas 
ideas who also would work well. But what we need is a what we need is to make them understand, okay? Because at the at the moment I know firsthand because I have spoken with them. I know firsthand that they see the current ERC system as the only fair one. That they know that it's giving a lot of problems and that it's giving some nonsensical results, but that they trust the system is going to work. However, they are also understanding that the system currently is not working as they wished it should work. And they are totally open to change it for something that will give better results, if the proposal is good enough. So, I'm betting one of the first tasks of the task of this council is to uh, put together a strong, solid um, proposal about a change of tiering and um, one that most of the community wants, because that's the second part. I mean, not everyone in the community agrees on the model they want for a tiering system. Uh, everyone agrees that what we currently have is crap, but really, when you ask people what they want, then you don't have a solid answer. So, the idea, the question was, is Gallin open to change anything? Because B17s versus I15s, we are not going to change it. That doesn't give a lot of... Um, I mean, it's normal that people are skeptical. Because if you say, we want the emissaries to discuss matters of the game, and in the same post you say, I-15s versus B-17s, this is not going to change, uh, people are going to say, well, then what is this concealed for? But the answer was exactly that. That, let's say that that particular post wasn't perf written in the, ve in the best way. And that, yeah, well, let's put it that way, okay? And that truly and really and for sure, and that they were, I mean, I know those two are not going to bullshit me. I know Quarter Ninja and, and Scarper, and I know they are not going to sell me this, because first of all, they perfectly know that if all that they have told me now turns out to be another fairy story, I'm going to blow out and tell everyone that this is a fairy story and that they are betraying everyone. So they are not going to bullshit me. If I ask a question, I'm going to get a fair answer because they know that if they don't give it to me, then all hell will break loose. <laughs> so, yeah, the answer is that everything is open to change, including the, battle, the tiering system. And if the tiering system is open for discussion, everything is. So really, the community has a go at change everything in the game as long as the ideas are good, make sense within the scope of the game, are widely popular within the player base, they are solid, they are well thought out, and they can be applied to the game. And that's enough for me. And that's why I accept it. I, don't, I won't have any power at all. But if I can help the community uh, council to take what it, their um, decisions based and helped by my um, support. I mean, I'll be 24-7 open for any questions they have regarding the story, regarding um, technical details of planes, tanks or ships. And if I don't have those answers uh, straight up, because I'm not a know-it-all, I don't know everything about World War II, there are a lot of things that I don't really know. I am familiar with most parts of World War II, I really know a lot about some parts of World War II, but I don't know that much about everything, about other stuff. So my role will be take those questions and find the answers. If I can give them myself, perfect, and if not, I will look for them. So if I can help them, I, again, I won't have any real power, but I will have a, a chance to help them. And that for me is enough. Because this idea is worth um, is worth making work. And that's why I accepted and that's why I'm, I'm saying openly that... Guys, if you right now were thinking that Gaiin was trying to pull your leg again with another fairy tale of a council that is worth nothing and that is going to be nothing but a group of yes men who are going to 
accomplish absolutely nothing in the long run and that is just another way to for Gaijin to win time well I'm here to tell you that is not the case this idea is seriously put forward they actually intend to make it work the way they said and um, they have no problems discussing anything within the game including tiering systems and flight models and uh, gameplay mechanics and whatever whatever is going to improve the game they are going to be super happy to hear and take in consideration and that for me is enough and I think it should be um, a good show I mean you all guys know first of all that I'm not going to sell myself and uh, that's another important thing because of course a lot of people are going to ask it that I have this role right now doesn't mean that I can't speak okay another thing that I made kind of sure <laughs> is that by taking this role I wouldn't have to stop being me and having the voice I have and being as open-minded as I am and to share whatever I think with anyone I'm not in sale I'm not um, for anyone to buy and certainly they can't buy me at all so they didn't obviously um, I'm going to have exactly the same freedom to speak as I have right now while I'm speaking with you and the fact that in this same video where I tell you all this stuff I'm telling you that I disagree with something that they did with the rules just means that essentially I'm not um, yeah that, that is true that I can speak whatever is in my mind and I'm going to keep on doing so because if I wouldn't be able to I would have refused the spot obviously because again I'm not for sale so what how could we sum this up okay and by the end of august there will be an election process where five guys will be elected by the community i strongly suggest you all of you guys to pay close attention to this process to read um, whatever those candidates have to say and to decide who you want to represent you in the in the council those five guys will form the council i will be assisting them with my historical knowledge and my technical knowledge about world wars 2 stuff absolutely nothing game related only facts about history and um, technical details those five guys will represent you in front of gaijin and will take all the good ideas to gaijin for them to consider and to bring into the game if possible those five guys I'm going to say right now, and I'm going to say strongly because I want this to be really understand, understood, those five guys will be spending countless hours in this. They are going to do a huge amount of work. They are going to be very exposed for the hate of the community if something goes wrong. And they are going to receive absolutely nothing in return. They are not going to get paid. They are not going to receive golden eagles they are not going to get free subscriptions they are not going to get anything all they are going to get is the satisfaction of be of seeing a game they love improving bear the bear that in mind when the council is elected and an idea that you think is very good they can't um, make it work or they turn it down okay they are not there for a sport they will be there putting a lot of work and a lot of personal time into something for the good of everyone please respect that um, also I will say that don't expect miracles why do I say this because of course everyone now is super excited those who aren't super angry are super excited because of the council and my bet is that they expect this council to be elected and maybe to enter into work by September and then have instant changes in the game. It's going to take a while. Whatever idea that is put forward through the council will have to be adapted into the game if it's accepted and that will take time. So be patient. Okay, don't think that just because um, it's taking time, it's not going to happen. It will take time. 
it will be at at the beginning it will be kind of a slow process and um, it's not going to be an easy task but if we all put the best of us into this uh, this is going to work and we'll end up having the world thunder we all wanted uh, not in the way that we all individually wanted maybe i won't get the historical tiering i want but i know i will get a much better tiering that we have right now maybe you don't get whatever thing you want in the game but you will get something much better than what you currently have and that's what's matter and that what matters that we make war thunder a game worth playing for everyone and in that um, tone i'm going to well just yeah, say that whatever questions you have, please post in the comment section below and I will try to address them, to answer them and make you know. Also, I want you to understand uh, one further thing is that I'm not going to play War Thunder in this time. Okay? That I'm in that post doesn't mean I have to play War Thunder and I'm not. My problems with War Thunder are still very real. Mm, the tiering system is still the tiering system it is. And I simply, I'm not going to play a game that annoys me. And currently, War Thunder annoys me. Now I think of it, I might, might try to fly some events. Now and then. But playing random battles is out of the question. I don't know, I will think about it. But, um, uh, as you can see, as you can see, I'm strongly against the idea of returning to War Thunder yet. Because of the, of the tiering system being so broken. Once that's changed, I will come back. And I'm sure that with the, this council, those problems will fade away and I will be able to play War Thunder again, which is something I also want as a personal level. So, well, that's it for now. Those are the things I wanted to tell you. I hope you have been entertained by this. Um, I hope you all um, give them a little bit more of time. I know it's a lot to ask, because myself, I left the game, and I'm saying I'm not going to immediately return to it. Um, but I sti at, le at least I have trust in them. If you have lost your faith in them, give them a little bit of time to prove you wrong. Because I'm convinced that, well, again, I'm convinced because they convinced me. All the questions I was asking, I was getting the right answers. And they know that if what they were telling me was not true, I will jump out and say, all they told me is a lie, don't trust these guys ever again. So they are not going to run that risk. And they, they are not going to bullshit me, guys. And if they are not going to bullshit me, that means that they are not going to bullshit you. So yeah, just be a little bit patient. And um, keep an eye on War Thunder. If you have left it, maybe in some time it's worth returning to. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you later.